Today, you're gonna to learn how to make this really cool parallax effect. Oh, and hey, I'd like to point out this video's awesome sponsor, Skillshare.com, which offers thousands of classes in design, coding, business, and more. You're about to watch my parallax tutorial, but you could watch this full course on the subject at Skillshare. Now, Skillshare is just 10 bucks a month, but if you're the first 200 students to use my very exclusive link below in the description here in YouTube, then you get the first two months free. All right, so let's get started. Hey everyone, what's up? Gary Simon of Corsetro. So today we're gonna be taking a look at creating this uh, brief landing page here. Um, and the focus here, of course, is on the parallax effect that you see right here. All right, so um, what's happening here is we have three different SVG graphics. We have the guitar, we have this uh, kind of background crowd, and then a foreground crowd. And we're using something called Relix or Relax or Relix or whatever, uh, which is a lightweight vanilla JavaScript parallax library. All right, um, it gives you all the options. We're gonna touch on just a few of them, but you can learn more by visiting this site, of course, or this GitHub page. And I'm gonna show you how to integrate it and how to work with it. Uh, additionally, there's also, um, last week I covered Scroll Out, which is another very small 1KB um, scroll-based uh, animation library. It's not it's not animation, but it allows you to attach animations very easily based on items that come into view. And that's what we're doing here with this sort of really cool effect as well. All right, so for today's question, do you think parallax is good or bad in web design? Let me know what you think. I'll let you know what I think in the first pinned comment. Make sure you subscribe and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that you wanna do when you're starting a project or a link page or whatever uh, is obviously design it. And it's, it's even more important if you're dealing with something like parallax where um, certain parts of it are gonna be revealed um, in a manner that you really can't, I, I guess you could say gauge uh, when you're designing it here. So you'll have to go back and forth and probably readjust your SVG graphics based on how the parallax behavior is occurring. That's what I had to do actually, because I, if we look here, this is almost a pretty close representation of what I want it to look like when it's loaded up in the browser. But I, I, I realized as this started to push itself up based on the parallax effect, I had to add you know, a bunch of space on the SV SVG itself so that this didn't happen where it showed uh, the background of this container here. Um, and kind of the same thing occurred with this as well. Um, these individuals kind of have some um, space beneath it as well. So depending on, you know, uh, your specific use case, you may have to adjust things accordingly. Um, as you can see, it's very simple landing page here, but uh, definitely necessary if you really want to create a concrete design, always get in the habit of stepping into some type of design application like Adobe Experience Design to uh, get a, a very good solid feel for what you want the end result to be. All right, now, um, to make this all possible, we have this relics here. Um, and this is where you can find out the information about it. Um, I'm not gonna go over this too much, except when we go ahead and use these specific data attributes right here. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So in uh, the Visual Studio Code, I have a blank, well, almost a blank folder uh, called Guitar Alax, as in Parallax, you get it? Is that funny? No, it's not. Um, and I also have just an images folder with the three graphics. We have the crowd background, which is in relation to these people back here. I have the crowd themselves, which is the foreground crowd, the white one, and then the guitar over here. That's all. All right. So let's collapse that and we'll create an index.html file exclamation point. I'm going to put in a link and an href to uh, forward slash main, no, CSS forward slash main dot CSS. So let's create that folder. We'll use SAS for this. So we're going to create a file and call it called uh, inside of it called SAS.scss. And this is the, uh, si um, the SAS extension down here. If you select it, after you install it, you click on Watch SAS and it'll compile it for you. Um, and that looks pretty good. All right, so I'm just gonna call this Guitar Alax here. 
and let's just get started with the basic HTML and then we'll step inside the CSS. So we'll contain, um, we'll have two primary containers that fill out, that fill out the, the width of the browser and the height um, for 100, 100 or not 100%, but 100 viewport heights. And so what that will be um, is sections. So we'll have two section elements. Um, the first one, we're gonna have an H1 with master guitar with challenges. And then also paragraph here, we'll say enter or create guitar lick challenges. All right, this is an actual project I think I wanna tackle. I'm not gonna use this landing page, but um, I like the idea. Uh, button, we'll say join up now just for a quick call to action button. Um, and then we're gonna have three images. So the first one's gonna be images guitar dot SVG. We already have that in the folder. I'll try to remember to put this on GitHub. You guys can clone it or whatever. Um, we're gonna have a class here. So guitar, so we can reference it specifically. Um, also, in order to make this the the relics or the relics or however you wanna pronounce the name, um, if, for it to work, you place the class of relics onto the element that you want to be able to control. Um, we can also put in data attributes, but we're not gonna do that just yet, um, just this part for now. So then I'm gonna hit Shift Alt in the down arrow key twice to replicate that twice. And this one's gonna be crowd.svg and crowd background.svg. All right, and this one's gonna be simply um, crowd, same name, if I can spell, come on, or if I can type rather, I'm just gonna use the same one right here and we're good to go. So now our final section and we're gonna have just an H2 element here with shred your silly face off and then um, some lorem ipsum text. Just type in lorem and hit enter. Uh, you have to install the lorem ipsum extension here in order for that to work. All right. So uh, we're good to go there. Um, let's just go to our main.css real quick, or the SAS file rather, and just uh, define some basic sections. I'm not gonna hand type this out, and it'll be a little bit uh, cumbersome, but I will paste it rule set by rule set and describe what's happening. Very simple stuff, just margin zero and body, setting the font family to Montserrat, which I have installed, therefore I don't need to import it. Um, the width, 100% for the section, uh, the height, 100% viewport height, background, nothing uh, really too exciting is occurring here. Also, we'll go ahead and reference our H1, all right, inside of it. Just giving it some basic styling here, nothing specific to the purpose of this tutorial yet. Same here with the paragraph, um, the button, bunch of, we just need to style it nice. There's so many properties here associated with that. And then we'll close that out. So that's the end of the section. Um, we're gonna select the section section right here. And we're gonna say um, background is white. Z index, I'm just pushing it up five. Um, and then position is absolute, all right? So we're taking that second section. And the reason we have to do this is because, um, I'll try to remember to explain it later when we actually, I, I show it in the browser. It'll be a little bit easier for me to do that. Um, and then just some basic styling on the paragraph. Um, then we have our guitar. So I, we're positioning everything here with position absolute, makes it a lot easier. Um, we just have it right of the browser by 15%, top is 20%, width is 300 pixels. And then we have our crowd. And so positioning obviously these, these elements um, is quite important at this point. Um, as you can see though, for the crowd background, like the dimmed out crowd, uh, it's just bottom zero and then left zero with 100% and Z index zero. And then also we'll have our crowd which sits on top of it, Z index one, bottom left, nothing special is happening here. Um, we'll get to our H2 as well, which is in the second section area and just kind of styling that a little bit and that's it. So now what we can do is get control B, right click, open with live server. You need the live server extension for this to work. And there we basically go. All right. So um, obviously we scroll down, 
nothing's going to happen really. So let's go ahead and make this work with parallax. All right. So um, what we'll do is first we need to import it. So you can install this relix, relix. I, I, I'm going to call it relix for now on. I'm getting mad at myself because I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Um, and you can you can install it through npm uh, if you ha obviously have a more robust project other than this, or you can just use the CDN to uh, import it, and that's what I'm going to do. So I uh, this is the script right here. All right, this is the URL, and then. All we have to do to get this to work is very simple. We just create a script tag and inside of it we'll say var relax relics new relics and then we specify the class that we've attached to whatever we want to be able to, to apply parallax onto. So um, this would be relax right here. All right. So um, it's not going to work just yet. We actually have to apply um, a couple data attributes to these. So I uh, let's do the guitar first. All right. So the first thing we're going to put in um, is the data hyphen relics speed. All right. And this can go from either 10 to negative 10. All right. So we're going to put it at five and hit save. All right, so watch what happens right away. We could see as we're dragging this down, it's going a lot quicker up away uh, in terms of the rest of the page. And this is even more exaggerated if we change this to 10. All right, so definitely you could see it there, but we'll leave that one at five. Let's try the uh, crowds here. So um, let's go ahead. I'm going to copy and paste this right here. And this is a lot of trial and error getting this set up right. Um, for this one, the speed of this one, I have set at negative two. So obviously the opposite effect occurs. It doesn't scroll out as fast. Um, and then also here, we're going to make this two. We can also apply another uh, data attribute called data hyphen relics hyphen percentage. And we could put negative values or positive values here as well. I'm going to put negative 0.3 right here. And this one's going to be 0 0.9. And this I uh, controls the starting point. Um, you can see we'll go ahead and experiment with what happens here. All right. So you can see things have been repositioned based on adding that percentage attribute. Um, for instance, um, let's go ahead and just move things right here and notice where it's at in relation to the, the join or the join up now button and these people if I change this here to negative like four oh wait that's not the background one this is the, the background one if it changes like four we'll see it, it disappeared if we change it to like negative three We'll see it was pushed way up top. So it's very, uh, it requires obviously a small changes uh, to really get a position. I found that 0.9 position it at a point that I liked in relation to the foreground element right here. All right, so let's go ahead and try this. Very, very cool. All right, so what's also cool is recently I did a, a tutorial, I think just last week, on something called Scroll Out, and it's a very small 1KB uh, package that you can use um, that will, instead of just this being right here, which is fine, uh, it's, it's absolutely no problem with that, you know, just being there in a static manner with no animation, but if you want to control and, and be able to control the animation based on when this comes into view, then we can use Scroll Out. All right, so check out that tutorial. I'll provide, obviously, in that tutorial a more robust uh, demonstration of it. But we can also use include it via the CDN method here. Um, and I'll paste that right here. All right, this is the URL. All right, and then down here, 
we're going to say scroll out and threshold I think we're saying to say 0.6 and you'll see uh, I'll sh explain this in a second what that does um, so let me go back here real quickly uh, all we have to do is place on there's two steps here um, the elements that we want this to um, apply to data scroll right here and data scroll so we'll place it on the h2 in the paragraph element that was once static now we have to go into our main sas file and, de and define some of the uh, animations so the way we do that is we we specify data scroll here and we put a transition a transition also more complex animation keyframe based animations would work here as well um, the only thing I want to transform here is just our transition is the transform property. So we say on data scroll in, we'll transform uh, it to translate Y to its starting point, but on out, it will go transform translate Y 200 pixels down. So it's gonna, it's gonna have a parallax effect in and of itself. Uh, you can also, if you wanted to fade it in, by the way, with opacity, you can add opacity, um, just put specify all here and then just put opacity and then, you know, however you want to zero and one, but we'll save this here and let's give it a go. So let's scroll down. Now that's really cool. It's very subtle, uh, but it works well. And even if the user scrolls back up, it'll restart it. Very nice and smooth because I made the animation duration or the transition duration three seconds. So if you go fast, you can really see it. But yeah, I really like this effect. Obviously, you know, parallax has been around for a while, but I I think it's kind of uh, underutilized, you know. And if you do it correctly, it can definitely add a lot to your designs. All right, so hopefully you learned a lot. I think it definitely is worth uh, integrating Parallax as long as you do it correctly and you don't overuse it. So let me know what you think with, for today's question, which is, do you think Parallax is good or bad in web design? All right, make sure you subscribe, click the bell notification icon so that you get notified every time I upload a video, you know, because um, it's just so awesome, the content I put out. So, all right, I'll see you guys later.